In this video, for the first time ever, I'm going to use a type of clay that you burn and it turns into a precious metal. Some kind of black magic. Funnily enough, this video is sponsored by Black Magic and DaVinci Resolve. I'm a big fan of sculpting clay. So when I heard of this magical clay that transforms into metal, I thought, yeah, I'll get a whole bunch of it. I'll get loads. $800 I spent, which I thought would get me a lot. Rather than being underwhelmed, it turns out that this stuff is actually silver. You fire this stuff up and it literally turns into silver. People use it for jewellery and all sorts. So this actually, as it turns out, is quite a lot to work with, depending on what we're making. It feels like clay. So if we use this as like our template, it's, this is weird. It's weirdly heavy. So I think you can use water. Yeah, to work it just like normal clay. Oh, that's so goopy. I've never worked with a clay that feels like this. It's not normal, but it's not meant to be. So I don't know how well this stuff sculpts, but it's, it definitely is malleable with water, which is good. So I can join these up. Get a really clean cut. I think for a start, that's pretty good. But, because I've worked it with water, apparently when it binds, it uh, it can damage the silver or just sort of, you know, not be even or work at all if it's wet. So I have to dehydrate it. So I crack out the dehydrator. It's going, oh, there we go, there we go. That's not bad. And here's the other thing. This is like scrap that comes off, but this is like $10 worth of silver right there. What could this be turned into? It's a little tasteful nose ring. All right. Oh yeah, yeah no, I think this is it. I think this is my size. There you go, this is my nose ring. It's fine, funny. All right, it's dehydrating. We'll come back tomorrow and uh, get heated. Oh, look at that, it's the, it's the next day. These should be very dry. Feels pretty heavy. I'm looking forward to this one, but let's start off with the little guy. I think the way you're meant to know if it's silverized, it's all one even color. And the way you tell is you, like, you dim the lights. Oh, I think it's glowing. With a little bit of a wash in the sand, that looks like silver to me. That is very solid. And it fits. Let me know in the comments if this is my new look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's hit the lights again. Whoa. Whoa. All right, print it. Uh, oh, it did something. Huh? And I believe I just made a solid silver ring. Fits my middle finger pretty well. It can probably still be polished a lot more than I've done. I think I've just revealed the silverness, but I think the idea is you can get them to look really shiny. You know, maybe, maybe I'll do a bit later. But the main purpose of this was to uh, see if I can make it work. And I think I made it work. All right, so there's a couple of things I wanna figure out. One, can you sculpt on an armature and cure it and bake it? turn into silver. Two, can you sculpt silver onto silver and cure it and bake it? Three, how long do you have to wait for something to dehydrate before you can cure it and cook it? Oh, and four, how do you polish it so it doesn't look like dookie? If I can figure out those four things, I'm gonna be able to make some cool stuff. I am making a silver surfboard. Any guesses why? Silver surfboard. Oop, cure my surfboard first, starting off by dehydrating it, and we'll see if 45 minutes is enough at a slightly higher heat of dehydration. This is gonna look much shinier and nicer soon, or at least that's the plan. I have to say, this was working really, really well, and I'm so stoked for what I can actually create if this turns into a shiny, beautiful ring. But as I was polishing it up, it was heating up in my hand. So I had to switch over to wearing gloves because yeah, metal conducts heat. And this friction was generating a lot of heat. Wow. 
Whoa, and that's the first part on the Colossus thing. All right, let's switch. All right, second pass, even better. I think we'll just do a final polish and uh, pretty bloody good proof concept. Alright, that's the finished result. That's pretty goddamn impressive. That was clay! This turned into this. Holy crap! Now the next experiment is, this has just been in dehydrating for just over half an hour. Is that enough? Because if it is, then I can start rapid prototyping and making some bigger, cooler stuff. I think that worked really well. Now you can see there's tiny warps. It's just a little uneven. I think in part it's because, you know, it's hand sculpted, a little bit of a grind around the edges and that's gonna come up real nice. Now I don't actually know how exactly this works, but at the moment, my best guess is it's some sort of black magic. Hey, they're the sponsor of this video. Isn't that convenient? Now, Blackmagic is the go-to company when it comes to video production, both post-production and production. But really what you're gonna be most interested in, especially if you wanna get into video production, is DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve covers the wide spectrum of video editing needs, the special effects in the Fusion tab, audio mixing in the Fairlight tab, and don't get me started on the Color tab. Oh my God, the Color tab is like sculpting. It's glorious. And the Edit tab is where we live and make all of our videos. If you're new to editing, they have the Cut tab, which brings all of that awesome professionalism into one tab, which is super approachable to beginners and people who want to edit their first vlog or stream. There really is nothing to lose by downloading DaVinci Resolve and trying it out for free. DaVinci Resolve is the future of video editing and as it currently stands, is the best program I've ever used for video editing. So go check out the link in the description, download DaVinci Resolve 17 for free. Their new features are always amazing and you can take solace in the fact that this software is future-proof because this is a company dedicated to making videos incredible. With all the hardware they produce covering all ranges of needs and with DaVinci Resolve at its heart. And a huge thank you to Blackmagic for sponsoring this video and making this channel possible. These channels, all of our channels are edited using DaVinci Resolve. Go check it out. So next stage of the double, I have a surfboard and after a little bit of a polish up, I thought I'd attempt to sculpt a, a wave underneath. I did have a little armature inside it. I had no idea if this stuff would hold together or melt inside the clay when I fired up the clay. But I thought if it was contained in the clay, maybe it'd be fine, maybe? <laughs> clay itself just wasn't adhering to the silver that I was trying to stick it to, which, you know, it makes it difficult to work with, especially when I'm trying to build a platform to stabilize it on but I was hopeful that it could be a simple process when I fire it up that it fuses together both the already cured silver and the uncured silver clay. It broke. It obviously didn't bind and fuse, so I think, unfortunately, this is the end of my silver surfer dabble. I think the answer is, I'm being too simple. I'm doing, what is it, a little ring? Little, little surfboard? No, the universe is telling me I'm gonna go big and I know just the thing. Sylvester Stallone has, has in the past worked with the renowned pen company Montegrappa to create this monstrosity. 40,500 pounds. That's almost 75,000 Australian dollars. And if you thought that was too much, wait until you say the trailer. <laughs> to have light, there must first be darkness. Death does not exist without life. First, there must be chaos. Wow. Oh my god, look at it, here comes the snake. Oh, it's just the worst CGI I've ever seen. And it's the most expensive pen on the planet. Oh. But there it is. The chaos pen. Exotic. Majestic. Imposing. Needlessly expensive. My mind is blown. And I've, I've known about this ad for a while. And I've wanted to play with it. I've wanted, I've wanted to make the counterpart to this ad. That's how I'm gonna take this video, this silver experience to the next level. Sylvester Stallone made the chaos pen, but I, I can make the creative chaos pen. 
Starting off with a Parker fountain pen as a base, emptying out the inside contents, I went around and grinded all these little notches and divots throughout the pen. Reason being is I figured the clay would probably need something to grip to, so with a few notches and slots in place, I went about adhering clay around the outside of the pen shape and started to sculpt onto it. Starting off with making little notches and patterns in the shapes of some of my more chaotic cross hatching that I do when I'm shading or sketching. I want to work sort of in layers, the foundational layer being this more chaotic and hand touched textured base. And then on top of that, I start hand sculpting and layering on these really delicate lines and rolls that I wet to adhere and slowly flatten out throughout the pen. These lines would help create an interesting design element encircling and encompassing the pen that feels really organic, representing that satisfying feeling of drawing line weight variation and meticulous lines. And then the thought being that when I come to the polishing stage, I can polish the base a little bit differently and maybe even add some ink layers to add a bit of color to the foundation and then grind and hyper polish these lines that I'm laying on top so that they look reflective and really, really appealing. And if that works, and if I can clean this up and polish it, I reckon this could look really, really cool. <sighs> it's only one way to find out. With all of it sculpted and cured, I was pretty happy with how it was polishing up, but I thought I'd go a little crazy and add a little bit of color into the mix. Starting off with alcohol inks, giving it a bit of a blotchy dab all around to really sink into those crevices, thinking that if I polish those lines later, that will shine as silver and that sharper color will be in the recesses. But then to make it more permanent, because let's face it, alcohol ink just painted on top of silver is probably gonna get rubbed off over time. I sealed it with resin, which I added a little bit of pigment powder too to give it even a little more shine. I have no idea how this is going to look because as a result of doing this step everything looks goopy and muddy. The idea is once it's fully cured I can grind back the layers up to where those silver lines appear and we'll have these resin sealed color recesses with sharp silver lines creating the line work all around my pen artwork. To go up, you must first go down. To be a winner, you must first be a loser. To sit, you must first take a stand. And to write, you must first be wrong or, or get a pen. To, to write? Get it, guys? And to create, you must first no, not make stuff? Like, I don't know, this is stupid. But creativity is stupid. Creativity is chaos. The creative chaos pen. 
Unique, powerful, superfluous, confusing, a little overdone, one of a kind, legendary. There's, there's probably something with that. It's it's a pen. It's a cool pen, and it's mine. Go away. This I'm okay. Look, it is rough around the edges. I'm really kind of regretting. Like there was a stage where I ground back these lines. I think before I added the, the resin and stuff, I shouldn't have done that because it meant that they were shallower. And when I went and did all the grinding, you can see some of the silver from from those layers. But you know what? I'm deciding. It adds character. It looks more ancient and mystical. I'm actually really stoked that as a result of this, I have a really cool pen that is one of a kind that I made. This was really fun. Even though I had some stuff ups, where are they? There you go. My poor little silver surfer that never was. But you know what? It's silver. So I am deadly curious if you can actually just melt this down and pour it into something. I don't know, maybe that's a future video. Subscribe and find out what I'm gonna get up to next. Join along for the fun. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.